What's up everybody? Today I'm going to talk about uh, centenarian blood test values. Uh, so I'm going to summarize the findings of this paper here. Pro-inflammatory status is not a limit for longevity. Case report of a Sicilian centenarian. Um, so it was published in Aging Clinical and Experimental Research. And if you want to look up the paper yourself, I've included the DOI. So uh, let's look at the demographics of this uh, subject. So she was relatively short, uh, 147 centimeters tall, four foot nine feet, uh, 45 kilograms in weight, which translates to 99 pounds, uh, resulting in a BMI of relatively lean BMI of 20.8 kilograms per meter squared. Uh, interestingly, BMIs in that range, uh, less than 25, uh, have been reported in other centenarian studies. So what's associated with her longevity? Does she have longevity genes or long telomeres? So the authors of the study looked at uh, a couple of genes that have been shown to be strongly associated with longevity. In this case, FOXO3A and the SNP associated with that. So she had one G allele and one T allele. Uh, and that is not, that combination is not associated with longevity. In contrast, GG, having two copies of the G allele, is associated with increased lifespan. So she doesn't have longevity alleles related to FOXO3A. What about APOE? Uh, well, looking at these two SNPs for the APOE gene, uh, she had uh, a T allele and a C allele, which translates uh, to the E3E3 uh, APOE genotype. Uh, and this is not associated with longevity. Uh, longevity for APOE is associated with one E2 and one E3 allele. Uh, whereas increased mortality risk is associated with 1E4 and 1E3. So at least based on these two genes for, that have been reported to be associated with longevity, FOXO3 and APOE, she does not have longevity genes. So what about uh, long telomeres? Uh, so the authors of the study reported that uh, her relative telomere length was 0.66, which was below the average value, uh, 0.84, for female centenarians that were previously uh, reported in another study. So uh, uh, the tel telomere length is, is very popular uh, in terms of aging, but based on her telomere length, uh, it's, one could argue that her telomere length has nothing to do with her longevity. So what about her blood biomarkers? Uh, so uh, first, let's look at her liver, um, liver biomarkers. So her, uh, generally, all of them pretty good. Uh, ALT, AST, uh, uh, alanine, and aspartate amino transferases, pretty good, decent. Uh, uh, alkaline phosphatase at 75. Uh, alkaline phosphatase, ALP, increases during aging. Uh, lower values are, are uh, around 50 or associated reduced risk of death for all causes. 75 is not bad. It could be better, but uh, considering her age, it's, it's not bad. Uh, and then uh, going further, uh, GGT, bilirubin, conjugated bilirubin, all uh, decent values, nothing too extreme. And then what's interesting is uh, her albumin levels are very good, 46.4 grams per liter. Uh, I've... <clears throat> Uh, I've, I have a video with uh, albumin data showing that it decreases during aging to values in the threes, 36, 38, or less in uh, people her age uh, or even younger. Uh, so her albumin levels are actually fantastic. Um, and then her total protein uh, levels at 80 may not seem bad superficially, but uh, total proteins equal uh, albumin plus globulins. So when you subtract albumin from total proteins, you get a globulin level of 33.6, which is actually pretty high. I'm not going to go into all the data here, but there's uh, all-cause mortality data showing that about 25, values of around 25 are associated with reduced risk of death for all causes for globulins. Globulins are, uh, uh, in other words, immunoglobulins. They're a part of the immune system and, and how they would respond to uh, infections. So she may have some underlying infectious issues uh, going on. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, her lipid profile, and it's actually pretty good. So total cholesterol, 215. Superficially may seem high based on the reference range, but uh, I'll get more to that in a minute. Triglycerides at 98. Um, uh, the meta, there's a meta-analysis data showing that uh, values less than 90 are associated with all, reduced risk of all-cause mortality. So her 98 value is not far from that, so that's good. I should note that values closer to about 50 are associated with biological use. Relative to that, there's room for improvement. HDL 62, very good for her age. Uh, LDL, uh, based on the reference range, is elevated at 133, but there is uh, uh, a num there are a number of studies for LDL showing that higher levels of LDL are associated with a lower risk of all-cause mortality in adults older than 75, 80, and beyond. 
So when you consider the 133 HDL is contributing to the total cholesterol uh, of 215, her lipid profile is actually not bad. Now, what about other uh, hematological par parameters, other circulating biomarkers? Well, her kidney function is not great. Uh, in fact, borderline poor. So her creatinine levels are 1.25 um, milligrams per deciliter, and uh, that uh, translates into an EGFR, an estimated glomerular filtration rate of 35, which is very low. Uh, kidney function in biological youth, or in youth actually, is around 100 for EGFR. 35 is very low. Uh, End-stage renal disease is basically an EGFR of zero, so she's not too far from that. Kidney function is not great based on her creatinine levels. Similarly, uh, urea, circulating levels of urea increase during aging and are a marker of kidney function. So poorly functioning kidneys can't filter out the urea to urinate it out. Uh, uh, and her urea levels translate into a blood urea nitrogen close to 30. Now, there's more all-cause mortality data showing that uh, values less than 15 are associated with lowest risk of death for all causes, regardless of what the reference range is. So uh, this is about twofold higher than that, not good. Uh, also uh, contributing to the not great news is her uh, circulating levels of glucose, glycemia. At 108, she's pre-diabetic. Uh, now, interestingly, her uric acid levels, which are also a marker of kidney function, are good. And then her C-reactive protein, obviously a marker of inflammation, is actually pretty good, 1.13. Um, even though the reference range less than 5 is optimal, I have a, a video and a blog post showing that values close to zero are associated with um, uh, reduced risk of death from all causes and lower values are found in biological use. So this is potentially the best data of all that she's got low inflammation. Uh, and then going forward, other her, 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 uh, her red blood cells and differentials, um, her red blood cells at 3.9 aren't isn't bad. Values closer to four and a half are found in biological youth. Uh, but luckily and fortunately, her hemoglobin levels, which are found in red blood cells, are high. So for each red blood cell, she's got a more uh, hemoglobin content, which is good news because you need oxygen. You need hemoglobin to carry oxygen. Oxygen is used to perform work by the cells. Now, the bad news. So her mean corpuscular volume, the average volume in her red cells, does she have big red cells or small red blood cells? And her mean corpuscular volume is actually very high at 100.8. Uh, values around 88 are found in biological youth, and uh, uh, values higher than about 88 to 90 are associated with increase, increased risk of death for all causes. So the MCV is definitely in the wrong direction. Similarly, her, her red blood cell distribution width, RDW, is high so at 17.4. And I have a uh, blog post on my website showing that reduced risk of death for all causes found for RDW values closer to 12.5 or less. This is too high. Her leukocytes, or total white blood cells, is 7.55, although they're within the reference range. There is ample data showing that values less than 6 or within the 3.5 to 6 range is uh, better for risk of death or associated with reduced risk of death for all causes. And then the distribution for her neutrophils and lymphocytes, actually not bad. So uh, the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio here is about 1.8. Uh, values closer to one are ideal. Values less than two are pretty good. So her distribution is, isn't bad. And in similar to the CRP data, her lymphocytes are actually pretty good. Uh, she's got the lymphocyte levels of a young person. Um, uh, so at 2.55 or 25, 50 cells per uh, microliter, uh, lymphocytes levels decrease with age, and it's it's one of the main problems of uh, coronavirus. Is coronavirus uh, lymphocyte levels in coronavirus patients are almost completely wiped out to the point where they're 800 or less. So uh, she's got great lymphocytes, a great uh, immune response. All right. So just to summarize her data, the good news: her liver's in good shape, and she's got high albumin, actually albumin levels that are uh, indicative of biological youth. Um, she's got a good lipid profile, relatively high levels of HDL and LDL, which is associated with reduced mortality risk in older adults. She's got relatively low inflammation, and she's got higher than optimal white blood cells, which should be you know, somewhere in the three to half to six range, but high lymphocytes, which uh, you know, decrease during aging. So the bad news, her globulin levels are relatively high. She's got reduced kidney function, as indicated by the creatinine and blood urea nitrogen levels. She's pre-diabetic. She's got... Um, big red blood cells uh, and, and a high RDW, which are associated with higher mortality risk. So we have this bio, biomarker data. Can it be improved? Now, um, 
and in meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials, RCTs, dietary fiber intake improves kidney function, including reductions for creatinine and blood urea and nitrogen, and it's been shown to reduce glucose. And if you want to look up those studies, I've included the uh, DOIs here. Now, she, the, the, the dietary data in the study wasn't great. They just talked about what food she ate. They didn't provide calorie intake or you know, macronutrients, protein, fat, carbs, fiber, or minerals, vitamins, and mineral content. They didn't provide that data. They just had a sentence or two about what she ate and how often. And they reported that she rarely ate sugar and desserts, but that she frequently consumed bread and pasta. And I'm guessing this is white bread and white pasta, which are nutrient poor compared to uh, whole wheat pasta. But then you could even make the argument that white whole, whole grain breads and pastas are nutrient poor compared to vegetables. So if she exchanged the, these foods, bread and pasta, for higher fiber containing foods, including vegetables, would we see improvements for her kidney function and glucose? That would be my obvious take.